the magic of Funky Monkey. Funky Monkey loved magic. When he left school, he told his father he wanted to work for Danilo the wizard. But I need your help on the coconut farm, exclaimed Mr. Monkey. Your brother Cosmo is a bit slow. You're small and light, and you'd be much quicker at climbing the trees to collect the coconuts. Funky shook his head. You're forgetting, Dad. I get dizzy when I climb too high. Never mind, said Mr. Monkey. Cosmo can throw down the coconuts, and you can count them on the ground. Again, Funky shook his head. I don't count very well, he said miserably. I was always bottom in counting at school. So, Funky went up the hill to Danilo's spooky old house with its five turrets. When Danilo heard why Funky had come, he stroked his long beard, looked Funky up and down, then walked right round him. Hmm. 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 I've never heard a monkey working for me, he said. The wizard took him down to the vast cellar where he prepared his spells. Funky looked round at the big jars marked toad flax, elderberry powder, monk's hood and juniper berries. The shelves were filled with dusty leather books. The workbench in the middle of the cellar was cluttered by bowls, spoons of all sizes and some big brass weighing scales. At the far end lay a striped stick, twisted and curled like a crazy drinking straw. He looked over to the far corner of the cellar where a thin figure was busy stirring a three-legged pot. Funky was dismayed to see that it was a weasel. He didn't like weasels. A gang of them had stolen his father's best coconuts. You can come for a month, Danilo told Funky. I'll know by then if you're going to be good at the job. Funky was delighted. Wily the weasel gave a crafty smile, but said nothing. Danilo was a good teacher. He showed Funky how to wash the bowls with rainwater and dry them in a special way with thistle down for a good spell and nettles for a bad one. Soon Funky knew all the wild flowers, herbs and fungi which grew on the hillside and deep in the forest. Many of them could be used without magic. Crab apples to make girls beautiful, rosemary to curl their hair and bay leaves to protect them from lightning. Then the wizard explained how he changed brews and mixtures into magic potions by waving his striped swizzle stick over them. But you must never touch it, he warned. Even Wiley isn't allowed to and he's been with me for three years. Funky knew by Wiley's face that he did use the stick when Danilo was not there. After a month, Danilo said, You've done very well, Funky. Now you can start to work with Wiley. I often travel round the country working spells. He's in charge when I'm away and you must do as he tells you. The weasel gave Funky all the messy jobs he did not like doing himself to make things worse. He would sprawl in Danilo's chair with his legs crossed, watching Funky and telling him everything he did was wrong. Some days, Funky was so tired he could hardly walk home. One day, when Danilo was away at a wizard's conference, Wiley ordered Funky to climb the ladder and fetch a book from the top shelf. Funky's knees began to wobble. The ladder looked higher than his father's coconut trees, but he could not let Wiley see he was afraid. Halfway up, the old dizziness came over him. He stopped. Go on, jeered Wiley. What are you waiting for?
waiting for. Funky shut his eyes, gulped, and made himself go on. He grabbed the book in one hand, trying not to think about how far he was from the ground. The book was heavy. It slipped, crashing onto Wiley's head, and his easel fell, squealing with anger. Funky turned to look at him, lost his balance, and fell straight into a bowl of ivy soup. He gasped and gurgled, trying not to swallow the poisonous mixture. Wiley struggled to his feet. You clumsy, stupid monkey! He shouted. Wait till Danilo hears about this! You ruined his book of important spells! He rubbed his head. I'm bruised all over! I'm going home! But you'll stay here all night and mend that book! Wiley seized the big key from the door, limped out and locked Funky in the cellar. Trying not to feel frightened, Funky groped for a candle and lit it. Then he washed off the sticky mixture and dried himself. It took Funky only an hour to mend the book. So then he looked round for something else to do. The swizzle stick was lying on the bench. Funky picked it up and danced round the cellar, waving it above his head. Then a terrible thing happened. As he passed an old stone jar, it started to bubble and puff out clouds of steam. Startled, Funky stepped back, knocking over a basket of dandelion leaves which fell into the bowl of ivy soup. He threw the swizzle stick onto the bench and crouched in the far corner of the cellar, watching in horror as the stone jar grew bigger and bigger. It was going to burst. He pressed his hands over his ears. Suddenly, a stream of orange-coloured liquid spurted high into the air. Worse was to come. Some of the liquid fell into the ivy soup, which changed colour from green to brown. It gurgled loudly and began to smell nasty. Funky crouched in the corner with his eyes shut and waited miserably for morning to come. Then at last, he fell asleep. He was woken by the sound of a key grating in the lock. Danilo was staring round the cellar in amazement. Just behind him, with a big, bumpy bruise on top of his head, stood Wiley. Explain! The wizard's voice was harsh as he pointed a long, bony finger. Funky looked nervously at Danilo, who frowned when he heard about the book. But Funky had mended it like new, so the wizard was satisfied. He turned to stare at the bump on Wiley's head and gave a little chuckle. <laughs> that won't do you any harm. You were getting far too conceited. The weasel glared and turned away. It was ten times harder for Funky to explain about the swizzle stick. As he confessed what he had done, Wiley looked delighted. He knows I'm going to lose my job, thought Funky. But, to his surprise, the wizard was more interested in the mysterious brown mixture. He sniffed it, stirred it, then tasted it. Mm. His face suddenly lit up. Do you know what you've done? He shouted. You've discovered something I've been trying to find for years. A cure for nightmares. He seized Funky's hands and danced him excitedly round the cellar. Wiley glared at them both. Quite out of breath, Danilo collapsed into his chair laughing. Oh, oh, you clever monkey. Now, tell me exactly what you did and how many twirls of the swizzle stick you made. We must get it all written down at once. I've had hundreds of orders for this one. We're going to be really busy for the next few weeks. Wiley, fetch a pencil. At first, Funky could not remember exactly what he had done. He counted slowly, using his toes and fingers. Wiley wrote it all down, his face sulky. Although he could not help admiring the little monkey. 
When Danilo was satisfied, he told Funky to take the day off. Oh, but be sure to return tomorrow, the wizard said. I still have lots to teach you. Funky ran all the way home, eager to tell his parents what had happened. They were happy to know he was safe and were delighted to hear his story. Well, said Mr. Monkey, I can see that Cosmo and I will have to run the farm without you. Now that you are a real wizard. Then they all sat down to a wonderful feast of bananas and coconuts to celebrate Funky's new life of magic.